Nearman Condition, the home of Collected oh, Edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. How's it going, all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Nearman Condition, the home of Collected Editions, and join me today for your advanced look at the Phoenix Omnibus Volume 2 from Marvel Comics. Let's go ahead and get started. And welcome back, everybody. So what we're looking at here is the latest Phoenix Omnibus. I can't believe I say the latest. Like, there's going to be more. Ah, I don't know. Maybe. Um, I didn't expect the volume two, but yet here we are. This book, by the way, is due out in the direct market and book market on September 19th or 20th, depending on where you get your books. And a big thank you to David Gabriel and all the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. What we're looking at here is the standard edition cover by Stanley Art Germ Lau. On the left hand side is your direct market cover, and that is drawn by the legendary Walter Simonson. And that's the one that's going to be available only at your local comic book store, places online like cheapgraphicnovels.com, waltzcomicshop.com, readscomics.com, comicsbugle.com, Dying Breed Collectors, Organic Price Books, Tales of Wonder, In Stock Trades, and places like that. Meanwhile, the standard edition cover will be available everywhere. And the spines are different. So let's take a closer look at this book here. So here we have Phoenix. You have a volume two on the cover in this beautiful, beautiful piece by Art Germ. You have Claremont, Smith, Romina Jr., Silvestri, L. Simonson, W. Simonson, and Davis. All legends working on X-Men comics. Marvel Omnibus, the Phoenix logo. Again, the names Claremont, Smith, Romina Jr., Silvestri, L. Simonson, W. Simonson, and Davis. Volume 2 down there. And then the back of the book and what's collected in here. Now, before we look underneath the dust jacket, let's take a look at the previous Phoenix Omnibus. This is the one that has the standard edition cover. This is by Russell Dodderman. But just how much bigger this particular book is. But I did want to put both of the Omnis together. That's uh, Dave Cockrum on art right there and Paul Smith right there. And then showcasing the back. You can't even see the beak of the Phoenix because it's covered by all of these classic comics. But I did want to show them side by side just so you can see how much bigger this one is. The retail on the original Volume 1 was $100. The retail on the new one is $150. All right. Let's look underneath the dust jacket. And of course, I wanted to show the flaps right here. What's really cool... I don't know if I showed it on the first one, is that it is the symbol of the phoenix around the entire dust jacket. Now, there's the art germ piece with no text on it. The phoenix, Paul Smith, volume 2, similar to the dust jacket. And the Walter Simonson direct market cover, in case you got the start, or start, Uncanny Omar Talk Pretty One Day art germ cover. Uh, the back, by the way, that is not a hair I kept <laughs> trying to get it off of the book it is just the moving lines phoenix is saying hi or dark phoenix rather man that that piece is gorgeous all right we're gonna open the book up talk about the stories collected in here without really going into spoilers but also trying to explain why they're collected in here and then of course look at the build of the book okay let's go ahead and open this omnibus up of course we have some yellow end sheets we have this classic cover right here by John Romita Jr. from Uncanny X-Men 199 featuring a new Phoenix. And then we have the credits right here. All the writers, the pencilers, the breakdown artists, the inkers, finishers, colorists, letters. So many wonderful folks that worked on this book. And your table of contents and where you're going to find each of these particular issues. So this does double dip a lot if you have every Uncanny X-Men omnibus. Uh, and I'll talk about what else is in here in case you already have like the Excalibur Omnis. This is really for people that only want to collect the Phoenix story in omnibus format. So what this collects is Uncanny X-Men. I'm just going to go ahead and call it Uncanny because this is when the title, well, the title officially changed in 142. Uncanny X-Men 141 and 142 
168 to 176, 184, 199, 201 to 203, 207 to 209, 221 and 222, 239 to 243, and then material from Uncanny X-Men 185, 188, 225, 232, and 234. And also included in here is Avengers 263, Fantastic Four, 286, X-Factor number 1, 13 and 18, and 35 through 39, Excalibur 42 through 50, 52, 61, 66, and 67, and then material from Excalibur 62 through 65. That's what's collected in here. So if you have the Excalibur Omnis, if you have the Uncanny X-Men Omnis, you will have this stuff that's collected already. What this is, is it focuses on the rise of a new phoenix. At the end of the previous volume, you read the Dark Phoenix Saga, so you know that Jean Grey, by the end of that, is no longer the host. What we get in this issue, in issue 145, is the appearance, the first appearance, of this redhead right here, named Rachel. And her last name is Rachel Summers. Now, of course, this is Days of Future Past. It's a possible future where the X-Men, or all mutant kind, is being hunted down by Sentinels. I love that story. John Byrne, one of his last hoorah on the books. Lots of characters get killed. Let's move on to From the Ashes. There's so much to talk about that I've already talked about. From the Ashes is collected in here. Because From the Ashes showcases the return of what could be the Phoenix Force again. And it's all done visually. And you can read about it for yourself. Paul Smith coming into the book now. Being the ongoing artist. This has been collected not just in omnibus format but also in many trade paperbacks. And we have this young lady, her name is Madeline Pryor, and she looks a lot like Jean Grey, and there's a reason for that. But that doesn't come to play until much later. Right now, she's just trying to find happiness with her boyfriend, Scott, who will become her fiancé, and you can find out if they live happily ever after or not by reading the book. This is the honeymoon issue. So it actually goes beyond From the Ashes. Now, this issue is important because... Remember when I said there was this young lady introduced through the pages of Days of Future Past? She has red hair. Her name is Rachel Summers. Well, Rachel n travels back in time in an issue of New Mutants. I'm surprised that's not in here. And makes it into the pages of Uncanny 184. Also, first appearance of Forge. Look at how stylish my dude was. But now Rachel is in New York in present day. Well, present day in the early 80s. And she's trying to find the X-Men to warn them about the things that will come to play in Days of Future Past. So that's what these particular stories are. Her eventually joining the X-Men. And then the X-Men kind of taking a chance going, okay, yeah, sure. We believe you. Why not? Uh, 201 is the first appearance of this baby right here. And that baby is named Nathan Christopher Summers. Now, that's a big deal because Rachel believes that she was supposed to be Born, that she was going to be the baby because she is the daughter, maybe, of Cyclops from a possible future. So this baby really questions her existence. What is she doing here? Is she just some kind of time paradox? Well, that goes deeper and deeper into what will happen next. But not before we talk about a cocoon that's in the water found in the pages of Avengers 263. This will be collected in the upcoming X-Factor Omnibus, the classic X-Factor Omnibus Volume 1. This cocoon, it has a mysterious person inside, and in the pages of the Fantastic Four, uh, two, two, what is it, 286 is where you're going to find who that person is on the inside. Now, what's really interesting about this is that John Byrne had to change a lot of the art style, <laughs> or the, the art, right before the deadline. So some of the extras actually have the original pages that were drawn. And then we kick off X-Factor. Cyclops gets a call from a friend and has to leave his wife and child behind because he needs to reunite. He doesn't believe that this lady right here, Jean Grey, could possibly be alive. How can how can this be? But yet there she is and she will be one of the founding members of X Factor. Then we go back. So this is mapped perfectly. Honestly, like kind of makes me wish no, no, I better not even say that. I do not want that idea to come out. <laughs> but I was going to say, it's the way that I read them. I would love to see, like, story arcs collected of Uncanny and then X-Factor and you throw New Mutants in there. That's like a nerd's dream, I swear. All right, then we get this story right here where Phoenix fights the uh, Beyonder, but it's not... 
I think she is going by Phoenix. She decides to take the Phoenix Force in her. So the storyline actually goes all the way right up until the Mutant Massacre, where Rachel decides to leave the team. So she ends up going missing. Madeline Pryor starts finding out a little bit more about her background that might have some ties to Jean Grey and a sinister figure. And it all comes to play in the Pages of Inferno, which is the first crossover, real crossover between X-Factor and the Uncanny X-Men. And I've talked about Inferno on my channel so many times. You can find out how all that ends by reading the book or if you have the Inferno Omnibus, get it open. Then we move over to the pages of Excalibur, where Rachel is now part of the team because uh, she was kidnapped by Spiral. She was in Mojoverse, but now she has been rescued by her fellow team members. But during this particular collection, oh, Cerise, I love this character. Not enough love for that character. We do see her travel through time. We see... This guy right here, this is Necrom, who wants the power of the Dark Phoenix Force to take him over. And that all comes to play here. So her costume was this, um, one of the Hound costumes. In, ever since Excalibur, ever since she left uh, the X-Men, Rachel had this particular costume. But by the end of this saga, she ends up donning her, the classic Phoenix. I love that cover. So this storyline wraps up. And you can find out for yourself how it wraps up. I don't want to spoil it in case you haven't read it. This is really cool. Let's get to the extra. So this is really cool. This is the Mutant Report from Marvel Age 33. Talking about the new title, X-Factor. And of course, they were keeping Gene in the shadows. Redacting all the things. Uh, but I'm pretty sure most people that have, even new to comics, probably have read about Gene going into the pages of X-Factor. The original idea was to use uh, her sister. And then Dazzler also came up. But in the end... Jim Shooter decided who was going to be on the team. So this is right here. Uh, this is all my fault, Kurt Music talking about the return of Jean Grey. This is a really good article if you've never read it. This was originally printed in the Phoenix Rising trade paperback. Uh, but over here are the original pages. This is at the last minute that I was talking about. Uh, Jim Shooter asked John Byrne to change a couple of the endings of the Fantastic Four issue. Uh, the one that's collected in here, 286. And this is the original pages from there and house ads for inferno always make this connection i don't care how many times i've said it sim nastareth put them together sounds a lot like sinister love it the handbook of the marvel universe this is the deluxe edition that features phoenix with her new outfit and of course that being rachel and maddie right there and then some classic covers why is this called a phoenix omnibus if some of the stories that are collected in here focus more on Maddie. Like, I get from the ashes. that That's a very important story. And I think the reason why they focused on Maddie is because of what happens in the pages of Inferno. You want to build the character of Madeline Pryor up so she just doesn't show up in Inferno and she's wearing this amazing outfit. And yes, to this day, ooh, love that outfit. But it, I think so the readers, especially if they're only reading this omnibus and haven't read... 10 years of X-Men aren't confused as to who this character is. So it makes sense. Now, the biggest question is, what would be in a Volume 3? Because I really thought they were going to do a Phoenix Volume 1 and then a modern Phoenix collection. But I guess it did so well that we're getting a Volume 2. A Volume 3, man, I would love to see things like Phoenix and Song, that particular era of the Phoenix Force taking over, you know, kind of becoming its own thing with Grant Morrison. They did their old thing in the in the White Room, which was an idea that started by really Chris Claremont. But, you know, Morrison did the White Room expansion, if you will, that kind of led into War Song and then, of course, End Song. And all these little miniseries, oh my gosh, what I really would love is X-Men Red collected in a big oversized format with the resurrection or the... No, never mind. I don't want to spoil the title of that book. Even though the freaking title spoils what happens. Uh, but I wanted to come back to show the end sheets. I don't know. I just kept talking about what should be collected in Volume 3. And also look at the binding right here. Because the book retails for $150. And it has 1,328 pages. Now, the book is printed at the iMac printer. So I just wanted to showcase like what it would look like when... 
you have some whites or light colors because there's a little bit of bleed through from the opposite page. Um, as far as the way the book lays over, this is the way that it looks. One thing that I noticed on my copy, and I said this the other day about uh, the uh, Batman animated series omnibus, because this happens both at Marvel and DC, but there's a couple of wrinkles in a couple of pages on my copy. Uh, like this one right here. This is just one of my favorites. <laughs> this is my first X-Men comic book ever. So this one means a lot to me. But I noticed it right here. Uh, and it's in a couple of pages. Like a handful. Like four or five. So just wanted to be as thorough as I can be. But yeah, this is the way Like when lighter colors are shown. How the art kind of bleeds through. But that's it. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this omnibus, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answered within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this book. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on picking it up, which cover you're going to go for. Uh, if you're okay with the material just being collected in your Omnis or Epic Collections or your upcoming Omnis, I would love to know all those comments down below. Don't forget to smash that like button on the way out. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.